As for the other team that plays at the Garden and let us down in the postseason, well, the Celtics apparently still have some fences to mend with Malcolm Brogdon. According to Ramona Shelburne of ESPN, the Seas Guard might be unhappy with how the team handled his elbow injury. That elbow, which Brogdon did not have surgery on, is what caused the Clippers to back out of their off-season trade. And Adam Himmelsbach of the Globe with this little nugget today regarding off-season workouts at the Auerbach Center. Celtic social media team has posted plenty of pictures and videos of these workouts and players Boston arrivals, but there has been no sign of guard Malcolm Brogdon. Dun, dun, dun. All right, as we welcome in. Hi, Chris Forsberg, our Celtics insider. Got a little break finally from all the action. Now we're back. What are you hearing about Malcolm Brogdon, his injury and how his relationship is with the Celtics right now? So, Trenny, there's not a lot of, of noise out there. I think what it is is that there hasn't been a whole lot of talk from either side. We haven't heard really from the Celtics. We have not heard from Malcolm Brogdon's camp. And I think that's just led to a little bit of, of speculation. Now, obviously, when you are pulled through trade rumors, uh, coming off a sixth man of the year honor, you're you're probably not thrilled about it. And, you know, but like right now, it just feels like everyone's kind of waiting for media day to arrive for Malcolm to get his turn at the podium to to maybe speak his mind a little bit for Celtic brass to address it. Um, but I don't think there's been any shift in, you know, there's no nothing new about this. It's just we're left to like, oh, is, is he is he a little mad because he's the last guy to, to roll into town? Yeah, I, I honestly, like even the Adam Himmelsbach tweet right there, you know, with him, like them not posting him on social. That's where we are right now in the right. basketball <laughs> when basketball yeah. season like slowly it's approaching. Yeah, yeah, it's stuff. like, oh, yeah, well, let's look at Instagram and see. OK, well, they're not posting him coming into the Arrowback Center, so there must be something going on. Honestly, Trini, I think there's nothing going on. I think that between Malcolm Brogdon and the Celtics and just like Forsberg said, you know, nothing really out there. I, I just feel like people are speculating because there hasn't been much reporting on Malcolm Brogdon and that relationship. Relationship. I guess the one thing I would be concerned about is, you know, listen, everybody's if, if, if you found out your place of employment was trying to trade you away mm -hmm. to somewhere else, you would not be happy either because that's reflective on their how much they value you and what you can help them achieve. I guess for me, though, with him not being there, like I, that's understood. I'm a little bit more, Chris, worried about like, what does that mean for the elbow? If he didn't have offseason surgery, does that mean he didn't need it? And maybe he's just taking a little extra time like that would be the bigger thing, because I feel like we've seen so many videos all over social this summer. And we're going to see one later in, in the show with these guys working out and really getting ready for the season ahead. Yeah, but Brogdon's also very private with that. He does his workouts, usually in Atlanta. He goes overseas and does a bunch of community stuff. We don't see a lot of Malcolm Brogdon in the offseason. Now, it's fair. You know, he did not look himself anywhere near himself those final few games of the playoffs. The, I mean, he missed a, a three-pointer there in game seven by about six feet, and they took him out of that game. So I don't know. Like, you know, it'll be very interesting to, again, get him at a podium and hear him sort of talk through this. Was he upset that the elbow limited him at the end of last year? The way the team handled it. Certainly those are stuff that both sides need to address. But it, yeah, like the, the fact that he's been able to work out this summer is an encouraging sign. Brad Stevens told me back in June that, you know, they, they felt like four to eight weeks of, of rehab and strengthening was going to get this to a place. But like, look, they need him and they need him to be good this year to, to reach their ultimate goal. So you better hope that elbow is feeling a lot better by the time these games get going. All right, let's switch gears to someone else. They need to be good to get to the ultimate goal this year. Forsberg, you wrote today about why Tatum could be channeling his inner LeBron more this offseason, saying, quote, one of the greatest areas of growth from Tatum in recent seasons has been his ability to create for others. As we often see with star players, the game slows down, their court vision improves, and teammates generate better looks because of it. It's not as jarring now for Tatum to come off a pick and roll and whip a LeBron-like cross-court path to an open shooter. While there's certainly a balance that needs to be struck in allowing players like Derek White to initiate the offense and limiting just how much Tatum has to work on that end. The numbers do suggest that Tatum can thrive with increased ball handling responsibility. I, of course, read this headline, Forsberg, and I'm like, what? Do they not have a point guard? What do you mean? Does that mean he's not going to score? Like, explain to people what you mean when you say maybe he should handle the ball a little bit more. Look, look he, the, the best player on your team is going to handle the ball a whole bunch. And it just means that there's going to be times where, because you don't have a Marcus Smart, 
Jason Tatum is going to carry the ball up the floor and initiate the offense. He's going to run a pick and roll. He's going to get things started. He's going to draw a double team. and He's going to make the right play out of it. And so I thought Tatum got a lot better at it last year in terms of being able to create. The one number that jumped out for me in that story, Trent, it was that Al Horford and Sam Hauser, you know, kind of bigger three-point shooters, shot something like 48% off Tatum passes last year, the best two numbers on the team. Imagine all those shots now going to Kristaps Porzingis and what he can do beyond the arc. I think Point Tatum can make Kristaps Porzingis better, can make the Celtics offense better, and I'm eager to see how that looks. Yeah, I mean, Jason Tatum, he added playmaking to his bag last season and it proved to, you know, work out well for him. So I don't worry about Jason Tatum having the hand in this, having the ball in his hand at all.